Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, U.S. Navy completes UAV testing in Arctic Circle. General Atomics completes GE-25M test flight. And Mars helicopter ends mission. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. U.S. Navy completes UAV testing in Arctic Circle. A nearly decade-long project involving the Naval Postgraduate School and Naval Research Laboratory has come to a close, bearing out the utility of the platform Vanilla UAV and its own flight planning software in the Arctic North. The collaborators integrated the NPS's flight path planning software named Potion, or Path Optimization, with Platform Aerospace's Vanilla UAV, putting the combination to the test in the, quote, daunting north slope of Alaska, making the best of a narrow weather window, end quote. The Vanilla isn't the usual multi-rotor battery-hungry UAV, but a glider, requiring an intelligent continuous series of calculations to maintain its lift and energy. Up north, heat is much harder to come by, negating the ease of lightweight UAV gliders to stay aloft. The NPS team focused on designing, quote, energy-aware aerial flight, end quote, under the program, according to Associate Professor Vladimir Dobrokotov. The team managed to develop an energy-optimal approach under the potion effort, computing the efficiency of a stock vanilla UAV and training a neural network in the full gamut of fuel consumption and route optimization. The end result is a glider UAV that can design a mission in the most energy-advantageous route, with time-varying three-dimensional wind data referenced from weather forecasts a week in advance. And after the break, call your trophy nominations due on the 31st. Flying is my entire life. It's all that I've ever known. I've relied on Hartzell propellers since about 1995. Hartzell means much more than a propeller. It's a relationship. When you hear the phrase, built on honor, they care about us as pilots, they care about our community, and they care about the product they build. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our Next Gen Minute. Call your trophy nominations due on the 31st. The National Aeronautic Association's Robert J. Collier Trophy is up for grabs for 2023, and nominations are accepted through January 31st. The trophy is annually awarded to the, quote, greatest achievement in aeronautics or astronautics in America with respect to improving the performance, efficiency, and safety of air or space vehicles, end quote. The trophy has one particular addendum for such pioneering ideas, however. The advancement has to have proven itself valuable through actual demonstrated use in the preceding year. Electra Order Book swells to 2,000. Electra announced a total pre order sales book with more than 2,000 electric short takeoff and landing aircraft, adding up to an $8 billion value at list price. The firm was pushed over the 2000 mark with letters of intent from Jet Set Go Aviation Services Private Limited, LYGG of Finland, and Charm Aviation. Their aircraft is slated to be a hot contender for providing electric-powered short-distance flights from urban Vertiport, with additional coverage for longer journeys of up to 500 miles to regional hubs. Space Lab chosen to develop Ecomine Lunar Facility 
The Space Lab Eco Mine will, quote, offer an environmentally safe and more profitable way to obtain building materials needed for lunar development, end quote, using bioleaching and photosynthesis to recover minerals and continuously recycle air and nutrients. Ecomine will, if it results as promised, be more energy efficient than traditional mining approaches used on Earth, not needing chemical washes or high intensity smelting to sift desired minerals and elements from the lunar regolith. Redcat integrates AI into Army's recon drone program. Redcat Holdings has announced efforts to integrate, quote, advanced AI capabilities, end quote, into the U.S. Army's short range reconnaissance program. The UAV specialist is looking to incorporate Teledyne FLIR's Prism AI platform, allowing the future recon UAVs to autonomously classify, detect, and track objects and targets while underway, day or night. Redcat subsidiary Teal Drones is heading up the integration after being selected by the U.S. Department of Defense's Defense Innovation Unit and the Army as one of two finalists in the short-range recon program. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. General Atomics completes GE-25M test flight. General Atomics Aeronautical Systems has capped its first test flight of the upcoming Gray Eagle 25M unmanned aircraft system, publicly acknowledging the event that took place in December. The flight marks a milestone in the U.S. Army's future multi-domain operations-capable GE-25M. The aircraft will one day serve in active duty and as a National Guard bird, funded by an undefinitized contract capped at $389 million. Once in service, General Atomics expects that it will soldier on well into the 2050s. Testing so far has focused on the changes brought about by the aircraft's improved flight computation capabilities made possible by the endless march of tech. The Gray Eagle 25M now sports five times the processing capacity and 80 times more data storage, even 10 times the RAM, allowing for much better processing on the fly. Better, more refined automation and autonomy will be an extremely helpful change for the new aircraft as it heads into the AI epic. Testing also evaluated the Gray Eagle's HFE 2.0 engine and power generation systems as well as the new engine, gearbox, and generator under prolonged lifetime use. And after these messages, Mars Helicopter ends mission. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Mars Helicopter Ends Mission Ingenuity has bit the Martian dust. The surprisingly long-lived Mars helicopter has finished its mission after incurring damage to its rotors during its final landing. The program was wildly successful, going far beyond the lifespan expected of the flyway aircraft. Ingenuity was originally assigned to only five test flights over the first 30 days of its tenure on Mars, but ultimately it spent three years there as it flew 72 missions. Overall, Ingenuity flew more than 14 times farther than ever expected, logging more than two full hours of flight time. It's a respectable end to a scrappy little aircraft that Flight 72 broke its wings for good. It is bittersweet that I must announce that Ingenuity, the little helicopter that could, and it kept saying, I think I can, I think I can. Well, it is now taking its last flight on Mars. Ingenuity made history as the first aircraft to make a powered, controlled flight on another planet. But then it flew farther and higher than we ever thought possible. Ingenuity has paved the way for future flight in our solar system, and it's leading the way for smarter, safer human missions to Mars and beyond. That's what we try to do at NASA. Make 
the impossible possible. And so thank you, Ingenuity. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.